What is up, my reef addicts? As many of you know, I am in the process of building a 90-gallon clownfish harem tank, also known as the Borg Cube. Resistance is futile. As part of a full build series for this tank, today's video will be covering my lighting solution of this new saltwater reef tank. When picking lighting for your reef tank, you have to consider a handful of things. However, in the interest of preventing this video from dragging on 20 minutes, I will cover two of what I consider the most important part. I don't know, I sound like a WWE Sunday Super Slam at your Toyota Center. Be there for two day and two day. In the interest of time, I will be only covering two of what I consider the most important parts of picking out a light for my tank. First, what kind of coral do I want to keep? And second, what is my budget? Using my 250 gallon mixed reef as an example, here are my general thoughts. Number one, what kind of coral did I want to keep? For me, I always wanted a mixed reef with an end game goal of keeping Acropora and one to two clams. Immediately, I would need to consider highlighting solutions as most Acropora have more demanding PAR requirements. Second, what is my budget? Now that I've decided I need high light, and because my tank is a little bit higher than normal at 28 inches, my lighting budget will have to be a larger portion of my total build. In fear of my girlfriend actually watching my videos, let's just say for three Radeon XR30 G4s and the Ecotech mounting rail, I probably could have set up a complete nano tank and some. So let's ask these same questions about the 90 gallon cube and, and see if we can come to an answer on what the new reef tank will need. Number one, what kind of coral am I keeping? As many of you know, this tank will be an anemone tank, bubble tips, carpets, and very highly possibly a magnificent or retari anemone. On top of that, I like to also create an encrusting montipora wall against the back of the tank, very similar to a green star polyp wall. Outside of that, and kind of depending on the aquascape and where the nems eventually go, I'd, I'd like to keep a few SPS frags higher up on the rock work. So, what does that mean for lighting? Well, hands down, the Riteri, surprise, is the most light demanding of the anemones in my list. In terms of par requirements, they are right up there with acros, with reefers, who have kept them successfully for years by putting them under 400 to 800 par. So the answer to number one is we need high light. Okay, so now what is our budget for this light? This is where things can get a little bit iffy as there are many directions we could go. Many well-known and enemy breeders such as Coral Collections keep their NEMs under 20K metal halides. Others keep them under Radeon G4s, 8-bulb T5 kits, etc, etc, etc. For me, each of these options has a price tag. You know, if I go the LED route, I'm going for a larger upfront cost but future lower costs. With metal halides, I'm going for an expensive expensive upfront cost when considering the need to chill my tank as well, and expensive long-term costs with bulb replacements. These are the kind of questions I've been asking myself while researching this build, and I finally came up with an answer that both satisfies the light requirements next to my budget. This is it guys, the Aquatic Life T5 LED Hybrid. Yeah, would you guys give me a minute please, thank you. Hey, so there are some uh, build quality defects in this particular product. I want you guys to take a look at it real quick. Okay, so this was supposed to be just one of those cool, flashy, montage -y clips where I quickly build this and we just move on with our lives, but I guess that's not gonna happen. So these things right here are the uh, uh, cables that basically hold everything, God damn it. These are basically the cables that hold everything together. Okay, they come from the ceiling. We already installed those two. We installed this third one right here. Okay, so these little metal brackets are supposed to fit along this track. Guess what? This one doesn't. It just does not <laughs> go inside the hole. It doesn't want to go to its home. Well, guess what? Try it on the other one. Oh man, 
It's like magic. So if you take a real close look, right there, if it can focus one day. So if you take a close look right here, that hole is one size. This hole has a little bit of extra metal right there. So either I shave this down or I do something completely different, like take it, unscrew that one, take it, run it all the way through this side, maybe make this work. You know, this light has been around for a while now, but for those of you that are not aware, this hybrid build allows me to take advantage of the tried and true history of T5s while coupling that with my love of technology. Likewise, the system is much more affordable than its competitors, sitting at $269, giggity, uh, as opposed to well over $1,000 for, say, Giesemann's. As opposed to my 250 gallon, opting for the light rail system, I'm going to be hanging this fixture from the ceiling once my tank arrives later this week. Now, keep in mind, this product is just bare bones light fixture. It doesn't actually come with the four T5 bulbs or LEDs. That being said, let's take a look at what I picked up to fill those gaps. Right here, we have my selection of T5 bulbs. For those of you that graduated kindergarten, first, congratulations. Second, you may have also noticed that I have more than four T5 bulbs. Why? Well, to be honest, I was indecisive as fuck when choosing bulb combinations. Each combination can offer a unique coloration to your reef, so I decided to buy different bulbs and choose what I think you know, looks best, offers the best growth, color, everything. Next to my T5 bulbs, I have my LEDs of choice. As I will be chasing after that high par to propagate anemones, grow acros, and monties, I opted for the Radeon XR30 G4 Pros. I've already had so much success with these on my 250 gallon build, I couldn't not go with them. In terms of budget, yeah, I, I broke the bank for sure, but luckily, the relatively affordable cost of the Aquatic Life Hybrid Fiction makes this a much more reasonable reality. So, with the four T5s and dual Radeons, I believe we have more than enough light to grow whatever the hell we want, and some. I actually, I do have a question for you guys, and I'm hoping you can help me out here. For those of you with T5s, which bulb combinations do you run? I'd really like to know so I can test every option. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Just so you know, the tank itself will be arriving this Wednesday. So I'll try to get a full video out of that as soon as possible. If you want to follow this build or contribute ideas, please join me on Discord over at Fishy Business. I'm also posting lots of junk on Instagram at Aaron's Aquatics YT. Thank you all very much for watching. My name is Aaron. This is Aaron's Aquatics. I'll see you next time.